try to take the test next week, which, which will help you to, to discern what spiritual gift was bestowed upon you at the time of your salvation. And as you recall, each, each believer, whenever they accept Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, has one or more spiritual gifts given to them. Each of those gifts is used for the purpose to edify the body of Christ. Amen. And without going over all the gifts, I don't know how many of you, I see some new faces here that, uh, you know, that won't know what I'm talking about, but you know, there were speaking gifts, serving gifts. Uh, if, you, if you haven't been here and would like to know more about that, I can give you my notes. On, uh, on the different 19 spiritual gifts that can be identified in the scriptures, uh, how to uh, discern if it might be a gift that's been given to you. So next week we will you know, we will have a this kind of an educational test to help you to, to figure out which gift God has given to you. A lot of them are obvious. You can you can see people that you know that have the speaking gifts, people that have the helping gifts. Those that have mercy, um, those that give, those with good discernment. A lot of those are you know, easily defined. But we also have to be careful not to confuse talents with gifts. Um, some of us will have a talent that is just genetic, it's from birth. It's a lot like you'll see a professional athlete, they'll just have a talent. It's not necessarily a God-given gift. It may not be a spiritual gift. Unfortunately, some of the, the natural gifts overrun into the spiritual gifts. Uh, some people have the talent to speak, the talent to, to get up in front of people and start talking. I've got a little bit of that gift. I have to decide if that's a talent or if that's actually a gift. I'm kind of wavering on that at this time. I don't know whether it's just something that I that I was born with or is it, is it something that God has actually given me. And I have to you know, seek the Lord's face in prayer to, to find out if, if I just have the itch to preach or if God has actually called me to preach. And as you uncover your gifts, you have to find out whether it's actually what God wants you to do. The best way to find out is to kind of take the course that I've taken. And that's as things present themselves to you within the, within the church, volunteer to do anything and everything that comes up. Get involved in the church. And you'll find out as it's through a process of elimination which ones work for you, which ones don't, which ones that you just know that you're at home with. Other ones you'll know that you're just not cut out for. And you just do it. You just go and you try, you dedicate yourself, you spend a lot of time in prayer, uh, you ask for discernment to see if these things are what God has in store for you. And once we take that test, I think it'll, it'll, I think it'll help you, I think it'll enlighten you a lot on what different gifts are available. And. Uh, I'll be in prayer that you'll be able to uncover your gift as I try to uncover mine. And all of us as Christians together will find out how we can best glorify Christ in the short amount of time that we have here. Amen. That we can lift up his name and of course win as many people as we can for Christ's sake before it's time for us to go home and before he decides to return. After uh, Today I'm just going to do a kind of a fill-in, a gap message that I, that I call it. We're going to pick up a, a new series, and um, Tom had a really good idea that I think the Lord had been laying on me, and uh, the pastor concurs, so I feel like I have, uh, have a little bit of approval, and we're going to lean in this direction. We are going to start next, I don't know if, it'll, if I can work it in next Sunday, I don't know if we'll just give you the tests and let you take them home or, or do them here, but I'm going to do a series on cults, the different cults that exist in today's society, 
and I'm going to show you what they believe and how it's compared to what we know is as the truth. Now, there are so many different cults out there, and I'm going to touch on uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which are the Mormons. I've got, unfortunately, a really good background in that. I had a very close friend that I worked with, with for years who was a, a very devout Mormon. One of his uh, brother-in-laws was one of the, uh, was in the Quorum of the Seventy, and his family was very high within the Mormon hierarchy. And I've studied Mormonism, and I know the doctrines and covenants, and uh, a lot of the, uh, the beliefs and practices. And I'm gonna share those with you, show you how, how they relate to what we believe, and how they're wrong, and how we can defend what we believe. I'm also going to talk to you about Scientology, which is a religion that is very popular today, especially among the Hollywood crowd. I'm going to tell you what Scientology is. I'm going to show you how it compares to what we know is true within the scriptures. I'm going to, uh, to get on to the Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witnesses. That's one that I don't know a lot about. I know, I know something about, but I will do a lot more detail in that. And I'm going to touch on all the cults as, a, as I can drag them up one by one. And then, uh, time given, you know, Lord permitting, I want to, to compare what we believe as Baptists, fundamental Bible-believing Baptists, to church, other, church, other Christian churches such as uh, the Church of Rome, Roman Catholic Church, uh, the uh, Greek Orthodox, uh, I have a, friends and relatives involved in both of those, and I want to I want to share that along with. Uh, we might even talk about the differences as small as they are between uh, you know us and uh, some of the more local religions that we we hear about, like the Apostolics. Uh, we run into a lot of Apostolics up where we live around the Golly Bridge, the Gamble area. They don't believe exactly what you and I believe. And I want, to, I want to give you stuff that will help you see that what we believe is right. Because everything we believe is based on nothing but you know, the Word of God, the infallible Word of God. Amen. We don't believe in uh, modern day prophets or anything like that. Uh, we believe that there's a triune God where you know, just a witch or happen right? You know, within the apostolic community, they believe that Christ exists only. There is no Trinitarian. Uh, they believe salvation for all women are through their husbands. Just to, just to gear you up for how much difference we have in a church that we run across every day. Now, when we get into the, to the LDS church, uh, if you're not familiar with it at all, you know, there are, there are several local branches. There's one in South Charleston. There's one in Sissonville. Uh, they're here. They're close by. And uh, they believe that God used to be like one of us. That he was a human being at one time, just as you and I are. And that through our experience here on the earth, we can gain exaltation and become gods, or gods ourselves one day. And that there's not only a heavenly father, but there's also a heavenly mother. And that one day, whenever we are exalted to the highest level possible, we will join together with our spouses and we will have spirit children. We will have spirit children and we will go through the same process that our heavenly father has. We will create our own world and we will send our spirit children to the earth learn about life, how to gain exaltation again. Now that's my, that's kind of my lead up to that. Jehovah Witnesses don't believe that Jesus Christ is deity. They don't believe that he's actually God. Uh, like I said, the apostolics believe that Christ is, is God alone. There is no other, there's no part of the Trinity. But the Bible King James Bible that we use, we can very uh, 
uh, easily defend anything that these people would say. Amen. I'm hoping this, this air conditioning will go off so you can hear me in a minute. But today, what I wanted to, I'm just going to talk to you briefly about. So next week we'll do the test, and I'm going to open up to, I'm going to open up the calls to you. And uh, I want you to ask as many questions as you want. Uh, I'm pretty well ahead on the, on the Mormonism. Uh, I'm even, I'm, I'm real far ahead on Catholicism. A lot of the, uh, the Orthodox churches, I'm going to have to put a lot of study into some of these other cults. Scientology, I know just a little bit about. But if you'll study with me, it'll make it a lot better because we can challenge each other with questions and we get a discussion going and we can learn a, learn a lot. And the more you know, you know it, it helps you to lead those people to Christ when you come across them. But the many times that I've been in uh, Southern California, uh, you know, I have been past one of the main churches of Scientology in Hollywood, and they're everywhere out there preaching their version of the gospel. And what if you get cornered one time by Scientologists? You want to be able to defend what is the truth, you know, what, what the truth is according to the scriptures. So... Get ready for that. This morning I want to talk to you about something that is constantly in my heart. And I know it has to be in your heart too. I want to talk to you about having problems. Problems in your life. Difficulties that you face. If you're not going through a problem right now, if you're not going through some type of challenge, you've either already gotten over one, or you're getting ready to go into another one. Now, I am going through a lot of challenges myself right now. And this, that is why this is so dear to my heart, is this is the kind of thing that I have to hold on to while I'm going through these problems. Bless your heart. If I don't have this, you know, I'm going to fall apart. But every one of us, from one time or another, has went through great difficulty. And we've often wondered if we're going to be able to make it. Are we going to be able to get through it? Sometimes the pain seems too great to handle or the sorrow too much to bear. We often ask ourselves, will anything good come out of this? How could anything good come out of this? I want to talk to you heart to heart this morning about problems that you and I face in this life and how we can effectively deal with them because there's only one answer there's only one way to deal with them and it's the only one that i found that works and i want to share that with you before i begin let's go let's ask the lord to bless this class our heavenly father once again we're together together in your house father we're here to worship you and, and praise you and give thanks father this is been a tough week for some of us. Some, some of us, Father, each day is tough. Father, we have to rely upon your mercy, upon your grace, upon your strength. Father, I know that when I'm weak, you are strong. And Father, I ask you that you will come to be with us here this morning. You've promised where two or more are gathered together in your name that you will be in the midst. And I need you to be here this morning, Father, to, to help me teach this class, to help everyone that is, that is offering out the word this morning. Father, I pray for those that will be preaching, whether it be Fred or Corey, later today. I pray that you will empower them with the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that they will be able to lead someone to Christ or that someone that's fallen to the wayside will realize that they can come back to their father's house. Father, I want to I want to pray for those that are hurting, those that are in pain, whether physical or emotional. I pray that your hand would be upon them and you would give them your peace that surpasses all understanding. Father, I promise everything that we say and do will give you all the honor and glory for it. 
Father, as always, we pray that someone will be saved today. Yes. Someone will come to a knowledge of Jesus Christ. Father, help us as you've given us duties to, to carry out your name. All these things I ask in Christ's name for his sake. Amen. Amen. How many is going through a difficulty, a problem right now? I know I can't be alone. There's a few honest souls in here. <laughs> you know, everybody from the day they're born starts having problems. And whenever you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, that doesn't put an end to them. I wish I could tell you that if you accepted Christ today, that your problems would all be solved. That's wishful thinking. That's not the case. That's right. Amen. Those that are washed by the blood of Christ have just as many problems as anyone else. The only difference is, is that we have someone on our side. Someone that will help us along the way. Praise God. Amen. And of course, there's the one I'm talking about is none, none other than Christ himself, our, our great master who loved us so much that he, he gave his life on behalf of us that our sins would be atoned for that we could have eternal life in heaven. The problems that I'm talking about, they can range such a variety within our lives. And often we become so despaired and we wonder, you know, can anything good come from this problem? And will things ever return to being normal again? And some of these problems, they just last for days. Some last for months, but some go on for years, years and years. And as you go through them, you feel so weighted down at times. And you can't really see God's providential hand in it at that moment. But if you stick to your guns, if you'll make it all the way through, going the route that I'm going to describe to you, you will see where God, although you may not have seen him, he was there. Although you may not have sensed Christ being in that problem, he was just in the shadows. He wasn't far behind. David, who was an individual that went through a lot of problems in life, he recorded so much of his thoughts and feelings in the Psalms. Psalms 23, 4, he wrote, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He was speaking about the time that he was going through the valley of the shadow of death. But you and I go through the valley of shadow of death just the same. It's not just for him. And as for, as just like for David, we can expect Christ to be there with us with his staff in hand, guiding us and directing us and keeping us safe. You see, there is only one way to face adversity. And that's by faith in Christ Jesus. Everything else is in vain. You can, you can try everything you want to, but unless... You put Christ at the center of it, it's a waste of time. You can either struggle against life's difficulties or you can turn them over to the Lord. Those are the choices that you and I, you and I have. That's the choices that I've had recently in my life. Am I going to fight this tooth and nail on my own? Or am I going to surrender it to Christ and just let Him take it? It's tough for me to do that. I always feel like I can have a little bit more input into that problem than, than what I need to do. I always feel like I need to keep my, my finger on it. Even though God's got it, I feel like you know I need to help just a little bit because God doesn't know exactly the situation. Amen. How foolish am I? And how foolish are any of us if we think that? Bless you, Lord. I can't help myself. I'm that way. I fight that every day. Being able to completely surrender something is tough. Now, I won't go into detail about some of the problems I'm going, going through, but, you know, I've got loved ones that are in trouble with the law, that are trying to work themselves out of situations that are, that are not good. I have loved ones who 
are hurting because of recent deaths, children, little babies dying. I have loved ones that are fighting with sins as homosexuality, drug addiction, alcoholism, all these things, they pile up on me inside and I often wonder how can I deal with them. And then I realize that I can't deal with them. There's nothing that I can do. All I can do is lay it at the foot of the cross Amen. and right. let my master handle them. Praise God. I go through the process and I, I do my best, although sometimes it's so hard to do. When you can turn it over to Christ, you can finally realize that it's taken care of. You know that the problem is going to be solved. David wrote in Psalm 138.8, listen to this, The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. You know, it feels really good to me to know that what concerns me concerns my Lord. As small as I am, I'm just a puny speck of dust on this earth. You know, as theologians have, have, have put it in terms, I'm a soul that possesses dust. That's all I am. I'm well, just a soul right. that possesses dust. And although my problems might seem so small compared to what others are going through. And I, I think about things that are going on in this world, uh, the mass murders that are taking place, even within our states, and the wars that are taking place, the famine, the pestilence. And I realize that that which concerns me concerns my Lord. How wonderful it is that He is a God of mercy. When I read the Bible, I, I can't think of anyone that has been through as much besides David and perhaps Paul, the Apostle Paul. He reminds us that there's no limitation to what we can achieve if our hearts are set on Christ. Amen. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. That's not some things, that's not the majority of things, but it's all things. If you're trusting in Christ, Whatever problem you have in your life right now, Christ will strengthen you to deal with it. I don't know what your problems are. I don't know if you're dealing with drug addiction, if you're uh, dealing with alcoholism or sexual, uh, uh, some type of sexual sin, whatever it could be. Maybe you're going through something like financial problems. Maybe you're having relationship problems. I mean, the list is endless. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Now the first thing, the first most important thing is you have to have Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have to be saved. That's the, that's the only criteria you have to have for Christ to help you is you have to be one of His. Amen. Do you know Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you accepted Him? That's the question that, one question that you must consider. Turn with me, if you will, to 2 Corinthians 11. I just want to go over this passage of Scripture because it, Paul tells us so much of what he went through. And when I read it, I begin to wonder, what am I complaining about? 2 Corinthians 11, 24 through 31. Starting in verse 24, of the Jews, five times received I, forty stripes saved one. So he was beaten, beaten five times within an inch of his life. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once I was stoned. Thrice I su suffered shipwreck a night and a day. I have been in the deep. In journeyings often in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils of the wilderness, perils in the sea, and among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings, often in cold and nakedness. Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, 
the care of all the churches. Who is weak? I am not weak. Who is offended? And I burn not. If I must need glory, I will glory of the things which concern my uh, infirmities. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. So many things Paul endured during his ministry, and by all rights he should have not survived. But he wrote in 2 Corinthians 7, 5-6, For when we were come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side, without our fightings, within our fears. <coughs> Nevertheless, God that comforteth those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus. How many of you this very morning have fightings on the outside and fears within? You're battling. You're in a battle. You're, you're battling the situation that you're going through externally and internally also. This is the type of thing that Paul was referring to. Paul, having been through all of this, yet he survived and continued on for the cause of Christ. What was his secret? What do you think that Paul had? I think you can narrow it down to one word, and it's dependency. Dependency. You're depending upon a sovereign, omnipotent God who loves you with an everlasting love. If you can be dependent upon Christ, you've already won the battle. Although you may not have seen the victory, the battle has already been won. When you face sorrow, heartbreak, disappointment of any kind, Christ will do the same for you if you will let him, if you will turn it over to him and be willing to allow him to, to, to not only solve the problem but begin the healing process. He'll comfort you so that you will not grow weary. How many of you are tired this morning of fighting your battle? I, for one, the, the, you know, the battle has dragged me down. And I need energized, but I read Isaiah 40, 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. He will teach you how to trust Him, and He will teach you how to comfort others who are hurting. I feel like that I myself am, am being taught right now how to put my complete trust in God. How to finally let go of that last little bit of control that I feel so, I feel so necessary to keep. I've got to finally surrender it all. Amen. Let Him take it and run with it. I know that He can do so much better of a job than what I've ever done. Whatever your problem is, the problem that you're struggling with today, it may, be one, it may be one that's lingered for a long time, so long that you wonder if it will ever be resolved and if life will ever return to normal. Adversity, like nothing else, has the ability to bring about solid, constructive change in your life. When you allow God to bear your burdens, you will have a closer fellowship with I found myself in more prayer and more Bible study going through the trials and tribulations than any other time. And I believe that when my trials and tribulations will, the, the ones I go through now close and I begin to enter the next set, I'll be better prepared because I'll have a closer relationship with God. And I know that the next battle will not be as difficult because I'm learning as I go. I'm learning to trust in God. I'm learning how He works. You know, the winds of adversity blow strong. They blow strong in all of our lives. They also blow in every direction and they, they have no discernment of whether you're rich, poor, whether you're young, old, whether you're weak or strong. And although we desperately try to avoid difficulty and hardship, sooner or later, it's going to catch us. 
It's going to strike our lives from a direction we never expect, expected it. I have been blindsided in the last three years so many times. I didn't see it coming. I don't know if I just did not have the discernment or what, but one thing's for sure, no one is exempt from sorrow, heartache, disappointment, or sudden tragedy. Amen. No, no one is exempt. When the storm does hit, it can cause fear. It can cause anxiety. Sometimes it'll cause anger. <coughs> it can tempt you to doubt God. It can cause you to step back and say, you know, this just isn't working. I'm going to church every time the doors are open. I'm serving in the church. I'm tithing. And still all this is happening to me. You know, I just want to throw up my arms and say I quit. I mean, what's the point? I can be miserable and not go to church. That's what the devil wants. That's right. I want you to remember the devil is nothing but a liar. And he is going to always lie to you. And he's going to take any opportunity to come between you and God. Anytime he can, he's going to do it. Right. He's never told the truth about anything. Amen. That's right. He never has. He hates you with a passion. He knows his destination is hell for eternity. And he wants each and every one of you, including me, to go with him. Right. And he can't stand to see us have a relationship with Jesus Christ. He can't stand us. He can't stand seeing us enjoying our relationship with Christ. Right. These storms hit. The fear and the anxiety come with them. They tempt us to doubt God and His goodness. And we feel as though the very foundation of our lives is about to crumble. Whether it's emotional or physical, we are tempted to wonder if we'll ever be able to put the pieces of our lives back together. You know, after all, how do we recover from the heartfelt loss of a home the death of a friend or a spouse, the sharp and painful feelings of a divorce. How can we go on? How can we go on after we've lost our job and we wonder, where's our income going to come from? Will we ever get past the stinging reality of finding out that our husband or our wife or our boyfriend and girlfriend who once vowed to love us until death Love someone else. These type of pain, this is the type of pains that I'm talking about to enter our lives. Is there any cure for loneliness, isolation, and desperation? Will life ever be the way that it was before after a long and serious illness? These are the questions that I ask and I know you have to ask too. But always remember that in the aftermath of any storm, God is the only one we can turn to for encouragement. Amen. Amen. Right. He is always right there. And every storm that I've been through so far, once it's concluded, I can look back and I can see His hand guiding me through it, helping me along the way. And once it's over with, I can actually stand and praise Him. Amen. Because I know that though I'm weak, He is strong. And that He has loved me more than anything. More than anyone. He's the only relationship that I have that I know that I can count on 100%. That's right, amen. People will let you down. Preachers will let you, preachers will let you down. Husbands will let you down. Wives will let you down. So forth and so on. But God will never let you down. Amen. I loved what Carson said this morning. God never makes a promise that doesn't keep. Amen. That's he right. keeps them all. He keeps them all. I don't know anyone else that does. But you can count that Christ will keep every promise he's made. Every one. Many times people search through the debris of their lives looking for signs of hope. And anything still connecting them connecting them to the life that they once knew. Even if everything we regard as familiar changes, God remains the same. God never changes. Amen. In Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. He is our eternal anchor in the storm and in the difficult times. In Hebrews 6, 19, 
which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. He has promised never to leave you or forsake you. Hebrews 13, 5, be content with such things, for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You know God is never surprised by the difficulties that you go through. He saw them coming long before you did. He knew that they were coming. He knows all about what's about to unfold. And hopefully he has you prepared. And if you're not prepared this time, many of the problems that I've went through recently, I was, I was not prepared. But now, if they come around again, I am prepared. Amen. I am ready to fight. That's right. Some come as a result of living in a fallen world, these problems that you and I face. This world is not what God never intended it to be. And what we're going through often is just a result of the fact that this world is what it is. We have to wait for God to restore it. Others are, others are a result of sin. Sin. But even, when you, even, but even when you and I have turned away from Him, excuse me, whenever you and I have turned everything over to Him, <laughs> we know that there's hope even in such a terrible state that we live in. There are seasons when the winds of adversity hit without warning and with the force of a hurricane. But be prepared for the seasons of difficulty. Be prepared by prayer, by reading your scriptures, and realizing that you can easily turn it over to the Lord rather than succumb to the feelings of depression, guilt, and shame. Whatever problem you have in your heart this morning, I want you to, to turn it over to Christ and leave the hard stuff to Him. Thank you for joining me this morning. Brother Wally, would you dismiss us?